number one issue you keep hearing from them that they that they really want to bring up with? Well, we had a, I, th I thought we had a quality conversation with all of our coaches, um, and uh, you know, the last group I visited was our football coaches, and uh, uh, we outlined in great detail, you know, the uh, the concepts that you folks are aware of that you've been reading about, and uh, I think they embraced it very enthusiastically. Um, uh, if you think back on other destins, and the coaches have always come out with uh, proposals to increase. The, uh, benefits for student athletes. So I think they take a great amount of satisfaction is that uh, we've caught up with them. I think that's one way of thinking about it. A month ago you raised the idea of a rules committee for football. What support is there amongst the football coaches, the ADs for, for such a committee? You know, we didn't, it's a good question. We didn't discuss that today. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, will, I will take that to the, uh, there, there's an LLC that, that deals with football uh, officiating consisting of a board of directors with all the commissioners out of the ten schools, ten conferences. Uh, we'll take that there, but I'd be very surprised if uh, if that wasn't met with uh, some enthusiasm. So that the process would be to take it to the uh, to the LLC, which is a officiating a national officiating group. Rogers Redding, for example, um, is involved in that, and you know we need a different forum, kind of like, as I mentioned when we were in, in Birmingham. If if this ten if the rule that we just went through the, the so-called ten second rule, if that had gone to a competition committee that was looking at the game itself, <coughs> and, and what, you know, which is what we do in basketball, we have a competition committee in basketball, and we look at the game every year. And if this if this committee looked at the game and they could vet it out, we could comment, and it wouldn't necessarily be in a rules. It would be in, in the looking at the college football game as the game being played the way we like it to be played, the way all of us want to see the game, and then they could either make a recommendation or not. Uh, so I, I think it's an indispensable part of the process, and that we need to put it in place right away. Thank you, Rob. Well, sorry, Mark. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, um, you talked a lot about autonomy and the idea of some reforms coming against the NCAA. There seems to be general agreement over what some of those things should be, but are you still in the process of? getting consensus among your members about what exactly the details of those reforms or do you feel like everybody's on board with all of those things that you're trying to get through? That's a good question. The, here's the way to think about it. The areas in which we have asked for autonomy are a series of principles and uh, we've had unanimous support for the the governance process and the autonomy since we started in our league. Um, we've not made any effort on purpose to try to get into details about anyone because once we get the process, then you know, let's assume that the, that the board of directors agrees and we pass the restructuring in August. Then we will work from August to January in each area, starting with full cost of attendance, to create the legislation that, that the, the five conferences or the 60, you know, it's really the 65 schools because they'll all be involved. Um, and then we'll get worried about the details then. But so far, we've, all, we've just been talking about the principles and, and our conference has been unanimous in support of uh, the vision as it, as it stands early. Don't forget, we put this together last summer. And it's been modified, and the list of uh, areas in which we're going to we want autonomy has been increased, and we're in full support of that. Uh, so, um, you know, that's where we are now, Ralph. You know, we're, we're, you know but there's a whole bunch of areas to talk about. And our coaches today were particularly concerned. They were delighted, I think, about the fact that we're focused on the well-being of student athletes, which is the nexus of all the you know the autonomy. Each area of the autonomy relates to student athletes, and uh, they were pleased with that. Uh, and I think uh, are very interested in getting into a lot of areas. The one area that the football coaches spent some time on today was agents. That's one of the principles, and it's one that this league has taken a sort of an aggressive approach to. Uh, and so we'll, and we've, we've told our coaches that they'll be very much involved in helping us shape what it looks like when you, you put a piece of legislation together that deals with that's an example. Some of the coaches talked about maybe getting rid of FCS opponents. Is that something that they discussed with you? Is that something that you're not 
They didn't discuss it with me when I was in there, and uh, we have no prohibition against it. That's an institutional decision. Would you be in favor, though, of seeing most of these yeah, schools yeah, be I, at all? I'm in favor of making sure that our strength of schedule is as is, is good as it can be. And as we enter into a new era, uh, we just went through the whole format change. You know, we're not going to dictate to our schools except for the one game that we talked about in the, you know, playing one of the other four leagues. We, have, we are not dictating that they can't play an FCS school. I mean, one could argue that it's, you know, that it's healthy for college football, that you can provide, you know, that you give a, some of these institutions a chance to develop some revenue or consequence to help support their program. So you could argue that. But uh, we have not told our schools that they can't play FCS schools, and we don't have any plans. Is it in the